Today on the What If Brigade, I want to talk about the survey. Yes. Uh, what if humans had to fight an animal? They gave, and the survey has lots of animals, everything from a house cat to a hippopotamus. You know, and a certain percent of people think they can fight a bear and win. They think they can fight a lion and win. And before we talk about, uh, you know, the circumstances in which a human being could beat certain animals <laughs> and could not beat certain animals, uh, we need to talk about two things that happen in surveys. And the first one is, I have trouble saying this, the lizard's man's constant. Uh, and this is that a certain number of people who take your survey, they're going to be contrarians, they're going to be trolls, they're going to be people who hate surveys and want your survey to fail. And they're just going to say messed up stuff to uh, mess with you, essentially. Um, and that's, according to Scott Alexander of Slate Star Codex, the lizard's man constant is about 4 or 5%. Uh, but, you know, this doesn't really cover the 8% of, of, of men who think they could fight a lion and win. The other one I want to talk about is uh, jaywalking. And, you know, that's where Jay Leno walks around and he puts a microphone in people's face and asks them questions. And if we, when you call people out of the blue or you put a microphone in their face and you ask them a question, uh, uh, sometimes uh, the circuits get crossed in their head and they don't understand the question. But other times they, they honestly just don't know what you're talking about. There is a certain number of that 8% that think they could fight a lion and win, where if they were at the arena and a lion walked out, they would be surprised because they were thinking of a mountain lion or a lionfish, or they didn't realize lions were that big, but they would just be like, <gasps> that's a lion? Oh, I made a terrible mistake. Uh, you know, and, and you got to put that in the percentage. And sometimes the lizards men constant people and the jaywalking people are the same. These aren't these are some circles with significant overlap. It's not necessarily discrete groups. Uh, so whenever you hear a stat like that, and there's a percentage that's four, six, eight percent, you know, you can just kind of say like, ha ha ha, that that's a lot of people that don't know what a lion is. <laughs> but <laughs> did you did you know a small adult male lion might weigh three hundred and thirty pounds? Yeah, and they have teeth and claws. They're they're killing machines. But, uh, you know, now that we've discussed how the survey is probably flawed, let's look at some ways where a human being could beat the most animals. Um, so if we want to, we have that survey of all the different animals and we want to beat the most animals possible. So the first thing we want to do is we want to pick the best human we can. A long time ago, when uh, uh, someone asked me who I would least like to fight, I said um, Minnesota Vikings uh, defensive lineman Pat Williams because he was enormous and very quick. I mean, he had just amazing uh, first step. Announcers would gush about it. He would just blow right past professional athletes. I saw him chase down a running back from behind. Just really quick, but also incredibly strong. He, could, he would reach out with one hand and tackle an NFL running back, one-handed, just, just really, really strong. So uh, in a fight, that's a big problem because it's hard. It's going to be hard for you to get away. And if you don't get away and he gets his hands on you, you're in trouble. Uh, so, you know, basically you need to dodge until you can turn this into a long distance race because you want, you want to be running for a good five, 10 miles before you have to face Pat Williams. <laughs> you want him to be good and winded. Uh, so, in a modern context, we're probably talking about somebody like uh, Aaron Donald, you know, a professional athlete, defensive NFL defensive lineman who is leaps and bounds ahead of even other professional athletes. And you would want to start training them from age five in unarmed martial arts, probably a variety of systems. And then so you train them for 20 years and then at their peak physical condition, they're 25 years old. Then you have someone like that fight the animals. That's going to give you your most wins. Um, and then uh, the other thing that we can do within the bounds of this survey question, and this is probably where some of those uh, uh, lizardmen contrarians come in, is the survey doesn't necessarily specify uh, which animal. You know, when we think about a wolf, well, there are several different species of wolves, and they come in different sizes. And if we think about 
the slowest, weakest, least good at fighting wolf, well, yeah, that wolf is probably going to lose. <laughs> it's, it is small and not very quick. And uh, an NFL de defensive lineman is very large and has aggressive tendencies and knows, knows how to use their body to attack. Uh, you know, when you think about wolves themselves, wolves do not attack the biggest, fastest, best at fighting caribou. They look for the old, the sick, the weak. They look for the young calves. Nature is cruel that way. Uh, but that is how wolves beat caribou. They, if they went after the biggest, strongest caribou all the time, they would get kicked in the ribs and they would break their ribs and then they would not be able to get food and they would die. <laughs> the caribou would beat the wolf. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> and so this, this, is, this is important. So if we take our peak human, especially, and we compare them to um, the, the slowest and weakest and, and least good at fighting animals, that's going to give us a lot more victories. And from a survey perspective, we can also think about this in terms of, um, you know, our survey where uh, we can expect if we survey a thousand people that one of the people surveyed will be the biggest and the strongest and the fastest and the best at fighting. Uh, and that person, especially if they're thinking of weaker animals, could legitimately say, yeah, I think I could beat up a goat. Or, you know, yes, I could, I could beat up a dog. These, these could be legitimate responses. Now, you know, a, a lion is, is pushing it. A hippopotamus is basically impossible. <laughs> it's going to win. But a lion, um, you know, you're probably going to have to get lucky. Uh, you're, you know, the lion lunges at you because it's so hungry and wants to eat you so much that it hits its head on a rock and knocks itself out. And then you have like five free minutes to stand on its neck and try to choke it out. Uh, you know, that's, that's how pe humans would normally beat a lion. Or the lion is just incredibly sick and weak and, you know, wasn't really going to be able to put up a fight and you're just finishing it off. Uh, if you did have to fight a lion, if you were an ordinary person and you have to fight a lion, you would want to have a, some kind of situation that would be incredibly advantageous to you. Uh, so, for example, a very thin tightrope uh, that you think it would be hard for the lion to stay on and you would just hang by your arms and your legs, and you would just shake the rope back and forth and hope that the lion falls into the chasm underneath of you both. You'd want to have some kind of setup like that, where, uh, you know, or or maybe there's maybe there's three ropes, but, you know, the top two that you get to hold on to with your arms uh, are things that the lion can't reach. <laughs> so, um, you know, you'd want to have some sort of situation where uh, you use uh, your advantages, probably your opposable thumbs, and you put this lion in a specific situation where it does not have the advantage and where you can use the minimal effort to beat it. Uh, so, so yeah, so that's how you, um, first of all, that's how you get bad survey results like this. You get lizard men, you get people jaywalking, and they just say silly things. But if you do want to beat the most, if you want to say humans can beat the the, the mo biggest number of animals, you take the peak human, you compare it to weaker animals, um, or you even if you take an average human, you can compare it to weaker animals, um, and then, or you put the humans and the animals in a situation that is advantageous to the human and disadvantageous to that particular animal. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so this has been the What If Brigade. I hesitate to ask, but what is the most dangerous animal you think you could fight and win? <laughs>